question. How do you distinguish yourself in a population of people who all got 1600 on their SAT? We so got nothing wrong. Could row crew or invent a $25 PC. Or you get into a final club. Or I get into a final club. So the scene in this movie took place in Harvard University, one of the top universities in the world, which happens to be the alma mater of the two-time figure skating Olympic champion, Dick Button as well. Enrolled into Harvard in 1952, the same year after he won his second consecutive Olympic, a record held for 66 years until broken four years ago by Japan's Yuzuru Hanyu in 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. During Button's college days in Harvard, he was indeed a member of the Delphic Club, one of the university's select final clubs. One of the most exclusive clubs, not just at Harvard, but in the world. Contrary to the conventional thinking that sportsmen focus only on developing their physical strength, the mental strength of these athletes on their figure skates who are competing at the highest stage of the sport next month will blow your mind. So who are these crazy smart skaters to watch out for in the coming Olympics? Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Before we jump into the video, make sure that you go down and subscribe to my channel. That way you are always the first to know whenever I upload a video and so you don't miss one. Figure skating. Top six or more crazy smart figure skaters competing in the 2022 Winter Olympics. To watch. Number six. Team USA. 21 year old Vincent Joe. I love the thrill of doing quads. Quad lunch. Sure, why not? Vincent Joe is born into a Chinese family who migrated from Beijing to Palo Alto in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> His parents are both computer science graduates from the top school in China, Tsinghua University, ranked number 15 in the QS Top Universities website as of January 2022. His dad works in Google as a software engineer in Silicon Valley. When his parents discovered their son's talent in figure skating, Vincent's mom quit her job in Oracle and moved to Southern California, so her son could train there full-time, while skating competitively. Vincent Joe received the Presidential Award for Educational Excellence. <laughs> Joe enrolled into Brown University in the fall of 2019, majoring in medical science. Much change recently went to Brown University. For fans, you will know the school as the alma mater of Emma Watson, the Harry Potter star. Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush, Emma Watson. Good one. <laughs> While Brown University may seem like a dream school for many, here is an interesting article we found in Chinese. In the article, it says upon hearing the news that Vincent Zhou will enroll into Brown University, there's a bunch of sighs and whys among the Chinese elitist circle. Asking why didn't he choose the top five universities in the U.S., like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, or MIT. A side note, Vincent's sister, Vivian Zhou, is a MIT graduate. Okay, so Brown, which ranks 60 in the top university ranking, is not good enough for the Chinese elitist. What's next? Let's go to the... Number five. And back on Team USA, 22-year-old Karen Chen. She competed in the 2018 games, but never medaled. Karen Chen, another skater representing the U.S. to compete in the Olympics this year, is an undergraduate in Cornell, a university with a world ranking of 18, majoring in human biology for the pre-medicine track. So we decided after going to Cornell to visit on campus, at first glance, Karen has almost the same background as Vincent. Her parents, both graduated from the top universities in Taipei, also migrated to the California Bay Area in the 90s to work in the top tech companies in Silicon Valley. Same story. Mums quit her job, accompanied the children throughout the skating journey. Kids work hard. Kids grow up. Achieve great results in skating. Karen, you're also making history. First women single skater to compete in back-to-back -back Olympics in 15 years. After the Pyeongchang Games, I know you took a break because of an injury and you almost considered retiring. How do you clear your mind knowing everything that you've been through? I did think about stepping away from the sport, but for some reason, like under all of that stress, I guess, I had clarity and I just realized how much I love skating. When I'm doing a spin, I mean, it, it's like one of the best feelings in the world. It's worth noting that her fellow teammate in the Olympic team, Alyssa Liu, also has a similar background. 
except her dad came from China to the California Bay Area to practice law. He drives me every day, wakes up early, and um, puts in a lot of money. For While Alyssa is still in high school, it's not hard to guess her next step to one of these U.S. top universities following her senior's footpath. Um, there is actually another American Chinese skater who had made the Olympic team, but with some twists and turns. Which brings us to number four. My name is Beverly Zhu. I'm excited that I have an opportunity to go. Besides skating, I play the piano and I like to draw and paint. You may not have heard of this name, Zhu Yi, or Beverly Zhu. She is an American born Chinese skater competing under the Chinese flag in the coming Olympics. She switched to represent China from the U.S. internationally since season 2018. Talking about this skater, her father is more well known than her. So high profile that when she was selected to represent China, it caused quite a stir among the Chinese skating fan community for corruption and nepotism. Her father is an award winning computer scientist specialized in artificial intelligence research, a PhD graduate from Harvard. He was a professor and director of the Center for Vision, Cognition, Learning and Autonomy at UCLA. He's now returned to China and appointed the Dean of Institute for Artificial Intelligence in Peking University, another top university in China, coming from such a high-profile family. Beverly Zhu was basically given the leeway to train with the top coaching team in China, including the 1994 Olympic bronze medalist, Chen Lu. Skate for China and I'm excited and like become another big name for China. She was selected to represent China even though the sole Olympic spot for the ladies event for China was not earned by herself but another Chinese skater, Chen Hongyi at the 2021 World Championships. Hence such an outcry among the Chinese skating fans community. Controversy aside, switching nationality to earn the Olympic spot under another flag is actually quite common in the sport. We have seen skaters like Aliona Savchenko and Vanessa James competing under different flags in different Olympics for their best shots at the Games. In the upcoming Olympics, we will see another ex-Russian skater, Ekaterina Kurakova, to skate under the flag of Poland. Nazywa się Ekaterina Kurakova. Cztery lata temu zdecydowała się wyjechać z Rosji i przenieść do Polski. Biało-czerwone barwy reprezentuje od 2019 roku. Kilka dni temu wywalczyła kwalifikacje do Igrzysk w Pekinie. W Rosji wiek kariery jest bardzo mały, że 15, 16, 17 górek dziewczyny reprezentują. Ja miałam już 15 i niestety nie dali mi szansy. Ja czułam, że kocham to, co robię i że ja chcę dostać tę szansę, żeby się pokazać, bo ja czułam, że mogę coś wynieść do tego sportu. That's actually a smart move. When your nationality doesn't help you to achieve your dreams, you switch. And talking about Russia, let's move on to the number three. Even though the trio of ladies going to compete for Russia are still in their teens, you can already spot their intelligence through various press interviews they did over the years. <laughs> Ну, не связанная с спортом, не связано со спортом. Может, хочешь приют для собак открыть или еще что-то? Ну, это не мечта, это я сделаю. Обязательно я сделаю приют для собак. Там у меня будут бездомные собаки, и всегда будет и породистые, и бездомные. Все будут очень много. Видно, похоже. Саша Трусова, known as the Quad Queen in figure skating, had already boosted a long list of records and awards under her belt. She is the first to land basically all the quadruple jumps for ladies except for the quad sal and quad loop. Her biography, The Girl Who Fights Gravity and Changes the World of Women's Figure Skating, have a five stars rating on Amazon. Подстегивает ли тебя на тренировках такое соседство с уже такими бойцами проверенными Сашей Трусовой, Саней Щербаковой? Да, очень, потому что смотришь на них и понимаешь, что если ты для себя сделал максимум, то Саша идет еще больше делать, и ты понимаешь, что еще надо больше. Вы here in the Kiss and Cry in Bratislava with the ladies champion Anna Sherbakova of Russia. What an outstanding performance. Your first experience in the Junior Grand Prix. How have you enjoyed the week so far? I really enjoyed it. I was excited to skate here because it's my first uh, international competition and uh, I think I did it good. There was a little mistake in free program 
but we will work on it. What a beautiful skater you are. Your English is excellent. Anna Sherbakova is well known among the skating fans community as an intelligent girl who is effectively bilingual and who could answer questions with a sense of maturity beyond her age. Также я катаюсь не ради какой-то конкретной там медали или соревнования. Мне все весь этот процесс очень нравится и особенно вот это ощущение соревнований, когда все получается. Это удовольствие от проделанной работы, наверное, ни с чем не сравнить, когда ты чувствуешь сам за себя гордость. Сложно. И Чен, и Хань, не знаю, невозможно. Let's go to the number two. Tonight's Beijing Olympics preview. Nathan Chen's first Olympics four years ago did not go so well. Ouch. So disappointing. Look at that technical score. We will be nowhere near to Han Yu's technical score. But he knows he will arrive in Beijing as one of the favorites in men's figure skating. For most fans. The most exciting competition would be no doubt the men's single duel between Nathan Chen and Yuzuru Hanyu. Both highly intelligent and strong figure skaters. Let's talk about Chen first. Nathan will be going in as the reigning world champion and the heavy favorite for gold. He came from an academic Chinese-American family like his other American teammates mentioned earlier. Chen's father is a research scientist. With a PhD in pharmacy from the University of Utah, runs his own medical research lab in Salt Lake City. while his mother works as a medical translator. Since he was young, like most Asian kids, he was put into various enhancement classes like piano, gymnastics, ballet, etc. My name is Nathan Chen. I'm a figure skater, and I am originally from Salt Lake City, Utah. I can play instruments, not like super proficiently. I like know how to play guitar, I've played piano in the past. I go to Yale University, and I am majoring in statistics and data science. What are you Um, this is like an old project that I was working that I worked on last semester um, with my friend. It's like a statistics project. This is like this platform is called R, um, and so this is in R Studio, and R Studio has a bunch of data already compiled together. And we were basically just trying to find where where throughout the months do the most people fly, and why would that be? Sort of like as as we progress further into the future, this line will map where this data is going to lie. For instance, an airline company might find this useful, as in like, oh, maybe within I don't know November of every month. No one's gonna fly, or fewer people are gonna fly in November. So maybe we don't need to have quite as many planes ready, or whatever, something along those lines. I don't know. Uh, but I find it interesting, and I think that I'm definitely more of like a quantitative reasoning type of person than a humanities type of person. So you know, I think education is very important, and I think that um, having that basis of knowledge is helpful, even in skating. You know, just you know, the world keeps moving, so I have to continue. It made me realize, you know, there's a whole fun, happy side of life that doesn't necessarily have to. Revolve around grinding all the time, and you can have a little bit more fun and relax. And I think that's really good for our mental health and just being happy in general. Well, that's what we should all do now. Yeah, you, let's let's take this sport part time. Olympics, Beijing Olympics 2022. Um, it really depends on how these guys continue improving. You know, if Yuzu starts landing consistent quad axles, then it's going to be tough. You know, that's going to be a big a big game changer.、Um, It's just a, you know it's been a great run being able to compete against him. I say that in a way that sounds like I'm over, but you know things will continue continue developing、um, both him and I, and I think we're both trying to push each other to be better, and I, I really like that. Nathan's smartness and cool vibes had attracted new pools of fans into the sport. His strongest competitor going into these games will be Yuzuru Hanyu, or some dub it, the goat.、Um, I mean, Yuzu's like the goat. Like he's the greatest of all time, really. Um, one of the best ever to step on the ice. Number one. Presenting Japan, Yuzu Hanyu. We're in the presence of real greatness. He really is a genius. Gold medalist and Olympic champion, Japan. Yuzu Hanyu. Most people know Yuzu Hanyu as the two-time and reigning Olympic champion, but today we are going to talk about the brain hidden behind this genius. During the 2018 Olympics. NBC showed Hanyu backstage preparing for his routine. Everybody was intrigued because nobody knew what he was doing. They were guessing if he was playing some games to distract himself. And of course, we wouldn't know, because these are the training methods Hanyu invented for himself. Hanyu later revealed that Hanyu suffered an almost career-ending injury three months prior to that Olympic Games. He wasn't able to train for almost the entire period. Think about this. He has just started training again. He was only doing his triple axel for three weeks and quads for two weeks. During those three months, what did he do? 
いろんなことを学べたしそれを生かせたのが今回の怪我からの復帰だと思っていますそう練習できない時に学ぶってどういうことだっ、えっと、解剖学だとか、はい、あとはその自分の体の動かし方だとか、うん、いろいろとその知識という面でつけなくてはなというふうに思っておりましたそうですかじゃあそういう意味での非常に進歩があったわけですねその間に、ね、そうですねやっぱり普段練習しているとどうしても見落としがしなこともあったと思うので、うん、いい機会だったと思います So smart students study. Genius students invent. Hanyu came out with these novel training methods all by himself to visualize the movements on ice and land these jumps mentally during his constraint period. And that's basically how he won his second consecutive Olympic title. In 2020, when Hanyu graduated from Waseda, a top private research university which groomed the future leaders of Japan in various industries, his graduation thesis was so intriguing that it was selected by the university for publication. An honor not normally given to a bachelor degree holder, but only reserved for the master or PhD students. Needless to say, the publication almost crashed the university website that day with abnormal traffic from all over the world trying to read the mind of this genius skater. We have another video talking about his thesis on using 3D motion graphics and artificial intelligence for figure skating scoring, so we are not going to talk more here. Watch that video if you want. Later. It was also revealed that he used his computer programming skills to build a program which automatically calculates the highest score that can be earned for a program based on the latest judging guides. He then structured his technical elements based on the highest scores which matched his own capacity. Who knows? This might be the secret of how he won his past two Olympics. In the upcoming Olympics, he will challenge a move no human had done before to land the quad axle, 4.5 rotations jump on ice. Again, He studied how to do this jump on his own by taking references from other sports such as the long jump and gymnastics, etc. それに対し、羽生の見解は。まあ、あの後、えー、内村さんの映像を見て、まあ、ひねりを見ているうちに。やっぱ、上半身早いなって思ったんですよ。上半身の指導が早い。でも、僕に関して、言わせていただくと、あの、アクセルって、ある程度こうじゃなきゃダメなんです。陸上のジャンプ練習では、肩の指導をより早くし。これまでとは違った感覚のアクセルジャンプを止めているという羽生。正直まだ表情では使えてないだからあんまり改善はしてないですけど陸上でやった時にあの本当に調子良ければできます Will he become the first man to land this unimaginable jump on ice? We shall see 人は超えれないですねパニックもしか超えれないだから誰は再び誰よりも輝く未来が待っているはずだ So When you are watching the upcoming Olympic Games, know that you are not just watching a bunch of athletes competing for a medal. You are watching a group of highly intelligent human beings trying to push the human body limit and be the best they can be. Stay tuned.